Tom Harrison from Claremore, Oklahoma. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and thanks for a wonderful weekend. This question is for Mr. Buffett. Being somewhat pessimistic by nature, I have a recurrent nightmare of a Wall Street Journal headline proclaiming Buffett kicks bucket. They, they may phrase it a little more elegantly than that, but, <laughs> but someday the headline will be there. <laughs> and of course, uh, Charlie's no spring chicken either. Um, <laughs> In light of these concerns, could you please go into a little more detail than that presented in your annual report regarding this secession issue? And my apologies for the morbid nature of the question. No, there's no reason to apologize. I mean, it's a, it's a question I ask our managers, incidentally, every couple of years. I, I About every two years, I send them a letter and I say, you know, if, if you die tonight, what will you, what will I wish you'd told me tomorrow morning? You know, and because uh, I have to make that same decision and I and I'm not conversing with them every night so I want them to put in writing to me once every couple of years uh, what they think about the subject who they think should succeed them or whether there's several candidates or what the strengths and weaknesses are and and I have that information available uh, and you know you, you you're entitled to the same sort of answer about succession it's it's part of it's part of buying into this into this business and it, it I can tell you that no one has more of an interest in it uh, than I do. And Charlie has a similar interest because we have a very high percentage of our net worth in the business. Plus, we've got a lifetime of effort in the business, and we want it to succeed for both, in our cases probably, that, at least in my case, the, the uh, ultimate reward to the foundation I have. But also because we just want it, we we like what's happened so far, and we want we want to prove that it can, it's not dependent upon a couple of guys like us, but that it can be institutionalized in effect. And we have, and Charlie and I, we know who will succeed me in what are likely to be two jobs: one marketable securities and one business operation. Want to be very sure that the culture is maintained, and I think it's so strong that I think it'd be very hard to change it. But in addition, the stock ownership situation with me is such that that it can, if there were any inclination to change it, it, it can be prevented from happening. I don't think it would anyway. Now, in terms of who succeeds me, that depends when I die. I, I you know, and there's no sense telling you who it would be today. Uh, there'd be no plus to that. And it might not be the same 20 years now. I mean, 20 years ago, it would have been Charlie, obviously. But it won't be Charlie now because of his age. And it'll be somebody else. But 20 years from now or 15 years from now might be some third party. But we've got, we feel very good about the succession situation. We feel very good about the stability of, of the organization in terms of the stock ownership situation. Because that is insured for a very, very long time to come. We couldn't feel better about the managers we have in place and the culture we have in place. And, you know, the individual will be named. I think I've mentioned, though, that when they open that envelope, although the contents of that envelope are already known to the key people. But when they open that envelope, the first instruction is, you know, take my pulse again. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but if I flunk that test, there will be somebody very good in place. Charlie? <laughs> The main defense, of course, is to have assets that will do well more or less automatically. And we have a lot of those. And, and uh, to the extent you improve that further by having very good managers in place and very good individualized systems for bringing new managers into the places, there's a lot of momentum here that would go on very nicely with the present management gone. And uh, now, I don't think our successors are going to be as good as Warren at actually allocating the money. No, we, we, we ran a little test case 10 years ago um, because for nine months and four days, I took another job at Solomon and things went fine at Berkshire. We, we've got... The managers don't need me. We have to allocate capital. We have to make sure they're treated fairly. And, and uh, But 
we are not making decisions around the place except in the allocation of capital. And, and that will be important. Uh, but some of that is semi-automatic and others, you know, it, it does require, you know, some imagination sometime or something of the sort. But for nine months and four days in 1991, uh, you know, Solomon was primarily on my mind and Berkshire wasn't and everything went on just as before. And we are far, far, far stronger now than we were 10 years ago. So I'm, I'm very comfortable with 99% of my estate uh, being in, in, in Berkshire shares. And I, I think it's an intelligent holding eventually for the foundation, uh, knowing that, you know, I won't be around uh, at some point uh, before the foundation gets it. Okay, area eight. Uh, 